Once upon a time, stories from Leicester Library's neighbourhood services. Hi, I'm Matt and I'm here today to tell you a story. Now I've brought with me my special storybook and I've been collecting stories in this for years. I have to tie it shut, you see, because if a story gets out into the world on its own, who knows what kind of chaos it can cause. So shall we have a look what stories I've got? Ah, I think this is one that you might like. It's a story called Nail Soup. Now, you might have heard a version of this, but I doubt you've heard this one. And in fact, you'll probably notice before I get to the end that there's no actual soup involved. The oldest known version of this tale was told by the spider god Anansi to the people in the paradise lands of East Africa eons ago. And this tale has come down through a thousand different generations into a hundred different cultures until it's reached me today. And no matter who tells the story, and no matter which version they tell, it is always sworn that this tale is as true as the ground beneath my feet and the sky above my head. There was once a young man whose journey through life had been hard. Many rocks had strewn his path, and in the face of these difficulties, his decisions had not always been wise. But despite his many hardships, he had preserved inside himself a core of gentle mischief. Well, one night as he lay down to sleep, he dreamed a vivid dream. And in his dream, he felt something hard and sharp pressing into his side, digging in and waking him up again and again all through the night. But each time he awoke, he searched and he searched, but no matter how hard he looked, he could not find the hard, sharp thing that was sticking in. Now, this young man was quite tough. After all, he was used to sleeping wherever he could lay his head whether it was the warmth of summer or the cold damp of winter, he was used to finding a hard bed on the street. So it was unusual that on this particular night, when he did in fact have a comfortable bed to sleep in, that this sharp, uncomfortable pain should be keeping him awake. And so it was with even greater surprise that the next morning, when he awoke, despite all the unsuccessful nocturnal searching, he did indeed find a long, hard, sharp, rusty nail sticking firmly into his side. A little bruised, but otherwise uninjured, he put on his worn old clothes and his warm woolly hat and he headed out into the chill of the morning. And in this town where the young man lived, there was a small public library. And despite having very little of his own, other than the clothes on his back, this young man loved nothing more than to read he could lose himself for hours in stories and forget all about the hardships of his own life. So it was no surprise really that on this cold frosty morning his feet, without thought, took him directly to the library door. Now there was a woman who worked in the library and she was somebody whose life had also not always been kind. She often showed an angry face to the world and she railed against the injustice. But really she was a person of soft heart and caring was her nature. And so when she saw this young man peering through the crystalline frosted glass of the library window one morning, she didn't hesitate for a second before she opened up and she welcomed him into the warm. They grumbled together about the state of the world and the heartlessness of the rich and powerful. And then she went about her morning chores, her daily routine, and he went off to browse the shelves in search of his daily read, his portal into another world. When his selection had been made, he returned with his book to the library counter and reaching into his coat pocket for his treasured library card, instead he drew out the sharp, rusty nail and he placed it on the counter before the library woman. Look at this thing, he said. It woke me again and again all through the night digging into my side. Well, the library woman was bewildered. Oh, if it kept waking you up, why didn't you just remove it the first time you woke up? Well, that's the funny thing of it, the young man said. Each time I woke, I searched and searched, and no matter how hard I looked, I couldn't find nothing. Until this morning, when I woke, and there it was, sticking sharply into my side. To be honest, if I hadn't got it here, and I hadn't got the bruises to prove it, I would have sworn it had all been a dream. Well, I can see it right there, said the woman. 
It's as real as the ground beneath my feet and the sky above my head. But why have you brought it here? Well, said the young man, that's another strange thing. I didn't realise I had, but now that I come to think of it, there was a dream that went with it. Go on then, the woman encouraged. Well, I feel a bit daft, the young man said, but go on, I'll tell you if you like. There was this strange old man, skin shining blackly in the light of the moon, and he danced round a small fire, round and round. And as he danced, he chanted this funny little rhyme. If my magic nail you find, you'll send a thought from mind to mind. But for this thought to travel clear, it must float on air from mouth to ear. If my merry rhyme you chant, then the magic you'll encant. And that was all, the woman asked. Well, no, said the man. Now that I come to think of it, there was a wonderful party right here in this place. And there were stories and laughing and singing and great platters of delicious food. The woman laughed. <laughs> well, but she wasn't unkind. And the young man took his book and he went out into the street. He settled to beg in his usual place and read and greet the occasional passerby and ask if they had a coin to spare him. And the woman went on about her daily routine. Now later that morning, another customer came into the small library and when she came to the counter and saw the rusty old nail lying there, she asked with puzzlement, why on earth have you got this rusty old nail lying on the library counter? Oh well, it's a funny thing, the woman said, but that, that's a magic nail. A friend of mine found it in his bed last night. And she told about the young man and she told of all the hardships of his life. And if I tell you this magic little rhyme, we will have the best party you ever heard tell of right here in this very place. Well, the other woman scoffed, but she was intrigued. Go on then, she said, let's hear it. And the lively woman began to intone. If my magic nail you find, you'll send a thought from mind to mind. But for this thought to travel clear, it must float on air from mouth to ear. If my merry rhyme you chant, then the magic you'll encant. Well, the woman took her books and went out into the world. But she had the oddest feeling that she couldn't quite put her finger on. And as she went about her day, she found herself repeating the funny library woman's tale and telling of the magic nail and chanting the strange little rhyme. Meanwhile, the woman in the library carried on about her normal day and only thought of the magic nail when each customer in turn asked a puzzled question about it. And she told each person the tale and the funny rhyme and each of them left feeling the strange odd feeling and found themselves telling the next person they saw. The next day, sorry, at dusk, the young man returned to the library having read his book and wishing to warm his hands just before he went to find a cold hard bed on the street. And as they locked up the library, they laughed together and went off in their own separate ways. And the long, rusty, hard nail lay forgotten on the library counter. The next day came, the young man collected a book, the library woman went around her routine, and the nail lay forgotten until each customer, in turn, asked a question about it. And so it went on. The next day and into the next day until the days turned into weeks. And in that time, the story flew out like birds on the air, from ear to ear to ear, of the funny woman in the library, and her claim that she had a magic nail, and the strange little rhyme that she told. And people started to write, and call and visit the library, all asking about the party. Well, the library, woman and the young man didn't know what to do. They got their heads together and tried to think, but neither of them had any money and they had absolutely no idea how they were going to give these par people the party they were expecting. How were they going to pull this off? And in the end, the only thing they could think of to do was to set a date and put their faith in the magic nail. And that is exactly what they did. 
Carefully worded invitations went out to one and all, inviting them to a spring party in the library. Come to our spring party, the invitation said, on the first day of May. Bring songs, bring stories, bring friends, bring food, and we will have the greatest party you can possibly imagine. We have a magic nail, so we know it's going to be great. And when the day of the party finally came, people came from miles around. And they did bring games and stories. And they brought their friends to see the magic nail and hear the funny library woman's tale. And there was singing and laughter and great platters of delicious food. And so, although when Anansi first told his tale long, long ago, there was no library, and it's true, in fact, that the nail was, in fact, a stone. This story remains as true today as it was back then. And that was Nail Soup Retold. And if you liked it, why don't you go and share it with your friends? Thank you very much. Bye.